Get everybody. This is great. So, um, welcome and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Glad everybody could show up. Um, I'm excited to be able to talk to uh, developers, software developers here at uh, CES. Um, this is great. Thanks for uh, putting all this together. So, I'm Craig Hurst. Um, I work in Intel's software and services group. Um, many people don't know this, but if you were to take Intel's software team and make it an external company, we'd be within the top 10 software companies worldwide. We actually have uh, a large number of software developers. The group that I'm a part of is the Visual Computing uh, Group. And what we do is we produce software tools for developers like yourselves to create entertainment uh, software. So video games, media applications, programmable graphics, uh, anything along those lines that's a visual computing type of experience. So it's a fun place to work. My son is very jealous. Um, so the first thing I want to do is share with you Intel's vision. This is actually new and it's actually pretty powerful. I'm, I'm proud to actually work for a company that has a vision like this. So I'm just going to read this to you because the text is pretty small. This decade, we will create and extend computing technology to connect and enrich the lives of every person on Earth. It's pretty powerful. This is Intel's moonshot. Um, and when I heard this for the first time, I'm thinking, how am I, in a software group, going to help enrich the lives of every person on Earth? What's my role in that vision? Well, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to create the software tools and technology to unleash this visual computing innovation and deliver amazing consumer experiences on Ultrabooks, on phones, on tablets, on all the platforms that Intel is going to create. So how many people went to Paul Adelini's uh, keynote? Just a show of hands. A couple of you? So it's very exciting to see the phone uh, and tablets, these new platforms that are coming out. Um, and also the Ultrabook, which is kind of the next you know, very exciting platform from Intel. Uh, and to talk a little bit about that, about how we're going to deliver great experiences with our tools on Ultrabooks, um, I've got a, a little bit of, a couple points here I want to touch on. So it's really about uh, the responsiveness, the battery life, and the performance that we can get with the tools that Intel provides on Ultrabook. So responsiveness is about uh, very fast video encoding with uh, tools like the Media SDK. Um, it's about very fast and responsive gameplay with tools like the Graphics Performance Analyzers. Um, and so that gives a very responsive, exciting experience for consumers, right? Lo uh, reduce the lag, reduce the wait time. Battery life, having ultra battery life is critical for these new form factors in mobility. The, uh, the tools that we use expose fixed function silicon in Intel's processors that use less power. And by using Media SDK as an example, you can do video encoding at a fraction of the power that you would do on a regular general purpose processor. Um, and then performance. By using our tools, it's really about making sure that your game that you're creating delivers the best experience. You're getting the highest frame rate. Uh, you're reducing all your artifacts um, for, for video. You can transcode a video to your iPod in seconds or minutes rather than minutes or hours. Uh, and so these are the key benefits that we're focusing on to deliver that value to the developers who deliver that value to the end users. So it's all about the experience that gets delivered to consumers. So I'm going to touch on three tools that are uh, part of the visual computing products team. Um, the first one is the Intel Graphics Perform Performance Analyzer. <clears throat> so this is really a suite of tools uh, that allows game developers to optimize their games for PC platforms. Um, and it's really uh, a fast uh, way to identify where are my bottlenecks in my game. Um, am I CPU bound? Am I GPU bound? Um, and how do I improve that? Uh, the Media SDK. Uh, after my presentation, Ryan, who's in the back of the room, will present on Media SDK and actually give a quick demo uh, to, to demonstrate some of the power of this, uh, this tool and what that can unleash. But what this is, is this is a software development kit for video developers to maximize the codec performance. So if you want access to hardware accelerated video encode, if you're doing video editing, uh, video transcoding, um, anything that requires an encode or decode or transcode function, uh, this is the tool for you. What it does is it exposes Intel QuickSync Video, which is technology that we introduced in Intel's Sandy Bridge processor, which is the Intel uh, second generation core processor. 
also be available in third generation core, codenamed Ivy Bridge, and, and, and future processors. It's really the only way to get access to that. The third tool is the Intel OpenCL SDK. And really what this is for is for developers who are focused on parallel programming using OpenCL to take that code and make it portable uh, and run uh, great on Intel's processors. So we have an SDK available. Uh, these are all available on, on Intel's website today. So again, it's all about delivering the performance, the power efficiency, and the innovation. Through these tools, we want people to be able to innovate and not have to focus on optimizing, right, and getting best performance or getting uh, uh, the best power or, or things along those lines. Use our tools and use the rest of your energy and your focus on how do you innovate and how do you differentiate. All right, so I'll go in a little more detail on each of these now. So the Intel Media SDK, it's a cross-platform API, and what I mean by that is it'll work on today's generation processors, last generation's processors, future generation processors. Um, the API itself is embedded within Intel's driver for our CPU. So every CPU that ships will have access to this API. So it gives you some future proofing. So again, this is really about if you're doing video editing, any video processing, any media conversion, streaming, video conferencing, those types of activities, uh, you really should check this out. Um, also, right, it enables your product for Intel Quick Sync Video, um, and you'll get the best performance possible. URL here, intel.com software slash media SDK. Uh, it's a free download. Uh, what you get is you get the, the SDK itself for free. Uh, you get the API and the dispatcher. Uh, there's free uh, code samples, detailed documentation, um, some sample applications that you can look at to see how do I build my own transcoder, um, how do I uh, implement this within my code. And then you'll also get access to updates, new betas, uh, access to the community to ask questions or get support, that sort of thing. So this is really a complete development kit to maximize the codec performance on Intel platforms. So what does it support specifically? So here's a list of the features here, and I'm gonna touch, I'm not gonna read this entire chart to you, but you can take a look at it. I'll just touch on a couple of these. Uh, the most important things are around the video encode because that is the most compute intensive uh, operation out of everything listed here. Excuse me. And the, uh, the three supported codecs are H.264, MPEG-2, and MVC. Uh, MVC is just released now. Um, we announced, by the way, the 2012 version of the Intel Media SDK uh, just a few days ago. It's available for free on Intel's website to download. Uh, MVC is a new codec that's now implemented in hardware in that SDK. What that gives you is access to stereoscopic 3D support. So if you want to do uh, a 3D application where a consumer might be creating you know, 3D home movies or converting from 2D to 3D, um, this is really going to be a benefit for you. Decoders, uh, H.264, MPEG-2, VC1, uh, and MVC, all in hardware supported. Um, there's a number of video processing filters that are supported in Intel's hardware that are listed up here that you get access to. Um, there's a number of advanced functions. Um, a couple of the, the most important ones are around uh, CPU and processor graphics load balancing. So you can prioritize where do I want my workload to function? Do I want it to work on the CPU? Do I want it to work on processor graphics? And what priorities do I set? So it gives you a little bit of uh, uh, advantage as to how you want to maximize the performance of the platform. The other advanced feature is around uh, custom user-defined filters. So if you are creating your own filter for film grain effect or some type of a ripple or some Gaussian blur or any other interesting filter you want to add, you've got the ability to do that and plug it into the Media SDK pipeline. Uh, operating systems, Windows 7, Windows Vista are supported today. Um, we're continuing to support Microsoft's roadmap of OSs moving forward. Um, and there's a number of sample source code that's uh, included in the SDK. So kind of bottom line, we support all the major codecs and all the major operating systems. So a real quick user scenario around quick sync video and how somebody might use this. So in this image here, we've got uh, one of the GoPro cameras that does uh, stereoscopic 3D image capture. So a consumer would maybe capture this video, run it on their Ultrabook to uh, edit it, convert it, uh, create what movie they want. Uh, they would then uh, upload it either to YouTube, uh, uh, convert it for uh, display on a tablet or a phone or another uh, PC device. Um, so really, 
uh, the, the, the advantages of quick sync video are significant. I'm not sure how many people in the room, show of hands, have heard of quick sync video. Okay, not a lot. So thank you for those that have. Uh, that's great. The, um, the biggest benefits we've seen are around power and performance. The performance actually has been astonishing. We, we kept uh, it very quiet with regards to performance numbers uh, until we released the last processor we did. And we have seen uh, ISVs that are approaching up to 10 times performance gains on their applications. Um, it's just phenomenal. And the power benefits are also amazing, which is a, a big benefit for Ultrabook battery life. So, uh, and there's a quote here from Tom's Hardware, but there's a number, if you Google uh, quick sync video, you can find a lot more press articles out there as well. Okay, I'm gonna touch, whoops, too quick. I'm gonna touch quickly now on uh, the graphics performance analyzer. So if you're a, a game developer primarily, this is a great tool for you. This is again a suite that gives you system, platform, and frame analyzer capabilities. Um, it's the best way to optimize your games for an Intel platform. Um, you can run uh, optimization experiments without changing the source code. Uh, it gives you deep metrics for Intel's processors and Intel HD graphics, as well as Intel Atom processors. So it gives you the ability to kind of profile and performance, uh, get performance, anal performance analyze right, on various uh, Intel platforms. Uh, it supports DX9 up through DX11, um, and it also supports OpenCL, so you can use some of the performance analysis uh, in GPA to analyze your OpenCL application. It also supports uh, Media SDK. So if you're a media developer or an OpenCL developer, you can use this tool to help you analyze your performance even more. Um, and that's really a big thing for Intel's visual computing tools. The next big focus is about interoperability because we used to see domains of developers that were purely game developers or purely media developers or purely web developers. Um, the lines are blurring. And so having our tools interoperate is gonna be very important. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a suite of tools. There's the system analyzer, which gives you kind of a heads up display. Uh, it's really your ability to triage and find where are my uh, bottlenecks in my game application. Um, I can then go deeper into frame analyzer or platform analyzer, depending upon whether or not I'm CPU bound or GPU bound. So on the GPU side, I, I can do deep analysis down to the draw call level, including the shaders, textures, D3D states, et cetera. If I'm CPU bound, I can take a look at the CPU metrics and workloads um, and take a look at what, where are my hotspots there. Um, and then if you're a media developer, you have media analyzer, and you can use that to analyze you know, real time my encode, decode metrics uh, to understand where I might be having problems in my application. So in terms of a usage scenario of how you would use GPA, um, you would start, as I mentioned, with the, the, the system analyzer heads up display. Um, it'll give you all the metrics to understand where do I wanna go next, right? I may be able to quickly triage something and be done with it and move on, or I can go deeper if I want to. Um, and so these are, some, these are some screenshots of how deep I could go. Um, and on the CPU side, again, I can look at, uh, uh, with Platform Analyzer or another product from Intel called VTune um, to analyze my code. Uh, if I'm GPU bound, I would use Frame Analyzer. So in terms of support, uh, we support you know, the latest uh, Intel Core processors with HD graphics, uh, Intel Atom processors are also supported. Um, uh, I mentioned the, the HD graphics support uh, that we provide, uh, operating system, you know, uh, the same as uh, previous uh, Media SDK, Windows 7 and Vista, uh, full 64-bit game executable is, support, uh, is, is supported as well. Um, I mentioned already DirectX 9 up through DirectX 11 APIs are supported. Uh, OpenCL, uh, for OpenCL 1.1 features, uh, you can uh, use this tool for. Uh, and in addition, you can use this for rich web analysis. So if you're a web developer targeting HTML5 applications running in a browser, um, those are gonna take advantage of Intel HD graphics as well as the Intel processor. You can use this tool to help you analyze uh, and find where you might be able to optimize that application uh, a little bit better. All right, OpenCL SDK. So this is really, as I mentioned, uh, about developers that are already working in OpenCL. 
there's been a lot of uh, excitement in the industry about the promise of OpenCL and what that might bring for developers who want to target a heterogeneous environment. I want to program to the CPU, I want to program to the GPU, I want to program to everything possible on the platform. So we have an SDK that allows developers to take their code and run it uh, on our processors today and get great performance. Um, we allow the ability, I'll touch on this here on the next uh, couple, couple of next slides on how you can do debugging and everything else. The, um, the one thing I wanted to say though is about, this is really a standards play and Intel is a strong supporter of standards. Um, these are some of the other uh, Kronos members that are part of the OpenCL uh, uh, community. Um, Intel has been uh, engaged since early 2008 on OpenCL and uh, we, sig we contribute significantly to the Kronos uh, OpenCL working groups as well as others. Um, we actually helped author and are conti uh, conti continuing to promote and evolve the spec for OpenCL. So in terms of how you would use this, first you would build your application. So there's some offline compilation and analysis of your OpenCL kernel code. Um, so you'd be using the SDK for offline compilation. Um, then you'd do some debugging. Uh, so you could use uh, 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 OpenCL SDK. We have a beta uh, CPU debugger, so you can analyze and debug your code. Um, and then you would tune it as your last step. And you would leverage GPA, as I mentioned before, or VTune to uh, uh, analyze and tune your code to get the best OpenCL uh, experience that you're trying to create. And again, this touches a little bit on the interoperability piece where VTune right, interoperates with our products um, as well as GPA. Okay, and then um, one thing to mention, we've uh, recently launched uh, something called the Intel Visual Computing Source. And what this is, is it's a, it's a one-stop shop for visual computing developers such as yourselves to go and find everything that you would need uh, from Intel for visual computing. So we have all of our downloads of free tools that are available there. We have access to all other tools that may be relevant to you if you're a game developer, uh, a, a media developer, uh, a rich web developer. Um, we have code samples. Um, we have experts that provide uh, white papers and other documentations, um, uh, case studies, and then there's access to the community. So we have a rich community of developers that come in and contribute um, and provide their, their feedback and what works for them and, and ask for support. And we've got an active group of uh, uh, application engineers that, that respond to them and provide uh, feedback. So the URL, uh, intel.com slash software slash VC source. Um, you can go there and find all these tools uh, and more, uh, and it's available uh, uh, for free. Everything's available for free. And I believe that was the end of my presentation. So the kind of key message is um, just to circle back to Intel's vision about how you know our goal is to help enrich the lives of every person on Earth through technology. You know, we're, we're starting with you know ultrabooks. Uh, with tools that are going to give great experiences. Uh, you can expect to see tools from Intel for the phones and tablets coming soon. Watch for announcements. Uh, nothing's been public yet, but as Intel is committed to this new category and these new categories beyond traditional PC computing, but computing across the continuum, our tools are going to support those as well. So uh, with that, I think I'll open it up for uh, my lawyer made me put this up here. So you can read this. Uh, or you can ask me questions. They also maybe put this up too. <laughs> Intel has a lot of lawyers. So uh, with that, I'll open up for any questions that people may have. You guys excited to be here? <clears throat> this has been a great CES. So um, there's a number of uh, uh, collateral on the back table uh, that talks more about the tools. Uh, there's a Visual Adrenaline magazine that has some articles that are written about uh, developers and how they're using our tools, um, as well as a, a brochure on the Intel Media SDK um, that Ryan is about to speak on next, um, and some business cards. So if anybody wants to, uh, if you're too embarrassed to ask your question now, you can follow up, ah, awesome. Okay, so the way, that, uh, the way that the Media SDK is going to help you with a transcoding is you can take uh, whatever your input support is. Let me flip back to that foil real quick. So if you have a, uh, let's say you have an MPEG-2 video, you downloaded a trailer off the internet. Um, 
let's just say it's in an MPEG-2 uh, video format. And it's a high definition video. Uh, it's too big to put on your, your iPod. And you wanna take this iPod and show your buddies over dinner or whatever, right, that hey, let's go through food tonight, right? Um, there are a number of applications that use MediaSDK to do this. So you would, you would import the MPEG-2 file into your application. Uh, the MediaSDK would take that and put it into whatever output container formats you want, whatever codec format you want. So you could put it into an H.264, an MPEG-2, or an MVC uh, uh, format. So let's say for your iPod, it would be H.264. So it takes the MPEG-2 codec, converts it to H.264, and reduces the, the, the resolution to fit on your actual device. Um, and so the way that works is it's all in a hardware pipeline. So with Quick Sync Video, the uh, uh, HD graphics, Intel HD graphics has dedicated fixed function silicon blocks that process that video, will decode it, uh, frame analyze everything, uh, you, can, you can adjust the frame size, um, and then convert it to the appropriate uh, uh, H.264 format, all in hardware. And so since I'm using dedicated hardware in, a, in those fixed function blocks and not using general purpose uh, a, a CPU uh, in a software element, I get extremely good performance at extremely low power. And so that's the reason why QuickSync Video was such a success, because of the power and the performance that was happening. Um, there's a number of companies that are using this for consumer products today. Uh, ArcSoft is one, Cyberlink, Corel, Magix, um, the list goes on and on. Ryan's gonna actually give a demo showing uh, QuickSync Video doing a transcode so you can see it live in action, how fast it is. And he'll probably, if he has time, I may give him a little bit of my time, I have eight minutes left. Um, but he can show you kind of with and without QuickSync what the difference is, and uh, it's pretty substantial. Yeah, next question. Yes. Um, MVC is a multi-view codec, is what that stands for. And I think the spec supports something like 32 individual views. The way that we've implemented it is for two views, for stereoscopic 3D. So it's not proprietary. No, no, no. These are all industry standard uh, 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 codecs. Um, I think that it's licensed actually through the MPEG LA, the MPEG licensing authority. So um, those guys have H.264, MPEG-2. Um, I think Microsoft actually gave them VC1, uh, if I remember, some relationship there, uh, and MVC as well, yeah. It's, I think it's actually somehow part of the H.264 licensing, uh, maybe just a, a, a you know, ancillary uh, license agreement based upon that. Yeah, yep. Any, uh, anybody else? All right, well with that I'll uh, maybe transition to, uh, to Ryan and give him a couple minutes to, uh, to set up and everybody can get a chance to get a quick break um, and look forward to an exciting demo coming ahead. Thanks everybody.